coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Hey, man. Hey, man, shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love, appreciate the support. As you can see, I'm not in my studio, if you would call it that. So, um, I'm on the road, man. Um, you know, I'm house sitting, I'm dog sitting. George Mason ain't like dog sitting, though, you know, that's my dog. You did? But, uh, excuse me. So, I'm here, and I had to make some content for y'all, man. So, First thing I wanted to say is a uh, big love to everybody who support me, man. Big love to everybody who follow the platform, everybody who rock with this movement. Because like I always say, it is a movement. It's not a moment. Um, I definitely appreciate y'all. Big love to everybody who watched the video last night. I think the video last night was actually the um, highest uh, number of views within um, that time frame from coming out at 6 o'clock to waking up in the morning. I think it had like 15,000 views. So I definitely appreciate that. And everybody who left comments and everybody who liked the video and put a thumbs up and shared the video because I do think that video is worth sharing, especially to some young people. Big love to y'all. I appreciate that support, support, support. Uh, man, today I was thinking in my mind, I don't know why, probably because, you know, <laughs> uh, bills I do. So I was thinking about prison, man, how prison is with, with, with debt collecting. You know, debt collecting in prison, man, is a very, very serious thing, man. I mean, real serious, sometimes even deadly serious. And what I mean by debt collecting is, man, dudes are getting debt, man, and they can't pay their bills, man. And dudes is coming to get that money in prison. You can lay flat and believe that. I don't care who you owe in prison, even if it's a sucker. He coming and asks for that money at least, at least, at minimum, he coming and asks for that money, you know. So when you when you have people who owe money in prison, man, that's one of the worst positions you want to be in, especially if you don't have that money to pay what you owe, because usually the consequences are very, very high. And um, I've seen everything that you could possibly think of happen to a, to a, a person because they owe money, you know, because they owe somebody money in prison, be it that they got some money for some drugs and ain't paid, they got some money from a store box and ain't paid, they got some money from Barney from a dude ain't paid, they made a bet and didn't pay it, uh, they gambled and didn't have it, um, you name it, it just goes on and on and on. But rest assured, in the penitentiary, you ain't got nowhere to run. You can owe somebody on the street which people out here do, and you can just stay away from them. You could be in another state, another city, or whatever, whatever, and you just stay away from them, and you ain't got to worry about them trying to get that money. Nine times out of ten, they're going to go on about their business or move on to something else and just write you off as a bum or a person to, who ain't you know good for their word or whatever the case may be. That's not the situation in penitentiary. In the penitentiary, man, the dude cannot see you every day and you owe him money and you not paying him. If he does, he's he's a sucker, a all day sucker, a lollipop. You did because if you owe me and I see you every day and I know you not paying me, for me you can't even eat. I don't even want you to eat. I don't even want you to be able to be comfortable thinking that you can owe me and see me every day and not pay me you know you're gonna have to be super uncomfortable or either in super pain either or you know that's just my perspective because i'm gonna feel a certain type of way every time i look at you knowing you owe me and if you smile if you laugh if you um just just functioning as if you have no worries I'm a, I'm a, I'm offended. You know what I'm saying? I'm offended because I feel like you think that it ain't nothing that you owe me and that you lied to me or you tricked me or you got over on me or you got out on me. I, I, I can't function like that. So I, I think that most people in this world, I don't think nobody in this world is the only one to think in the way that they think. So I be thinking that people feel like I feel. 
So, you know, when you owe somebody, you pay them. I hate the old people. That's one of my things. I hate the old people. If I owe you, I'm going to pay you, but I just hate to even owe you. But in penitentiary, man, dudes don't take on that philosophy, man. They'll lie. They'll try to procrastinate. They'll try to come up with all these type of excuses. When in prison, like I said, ain't no excuse. You either pay me or pay St. Peter, you know. Pay me or pay your medical bill, you know, either or. So, you know, like I say, I seen dudes, man, get get caught up in that a lot. And, I, and, and there's a lot of different ways other than the ones I've named. Um, situation, case in point is like a dude can get locked up in jail. He could be running the store box. He could have been selling drugs. He could have been doing whatever. He could get locked up and, and, and go to SEG or, or get transferred or get in a situation where he hurt somebody and they're going to ship him. And everybody know they're going to ship him. But you got 10 people in there that owe him. So now they're going to feel like the debt is gone because he ain't there and they ain't got to pay him and there ain't no pressure on him. But normally, dude will tell somebody that he know that will apply pressure to get that money. I'd rather see you with it than to see them keep it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they'll do. So say this dude get in trouble and he get he he. he Bust somebody up. He chopped somebody up. He put the Bethlehem in somebody. So now he gone. Everybody know he gone because he used the Bethlehem. Everybody know he's not coming on the camp. But you got a lot of people that own. He'll write that whole list down of who own him and what they own. And he'll give it to another dude that he know that will apply pressure. And that dude going to come to you and he going to say, look, uh, Bank said, man, you owe him um, $30, man. And you're supposed to have that this, this Friday. And then you have a lot of dudes that'll come with the flim flam. Oh, man, no, I pay you, Bank. Because bank ain't there. So they're going to lie. But this dude know the count. He going to say, nah, well, ain't, that ain't, he wouldn't put your name on here if, if, if you paid him. Man, I already gave him. No, you going to have that money Friday. Oh, I'm coming to see you, Joe. I mean, I don't owe you nothing. You you, you, you trying to come. <laughs> have that money Friday, though. That's how it go. And you got dudes that apply that type of pressure. And that's the dudes that they come to. Now, I done seen dudes buck on that. I done seen dudes straight get gangster because they feel that the dude that's coming to collect the money ain't more dangerous than the dude who they owe the money. So I done seen dudes, so man, I ain't giving you nothing, man. I don't owe you nothing, man. He left, man. You know how that go. He gone. Nah, you know, you do owe me because he told me to get it and I'm going to get it. No, nah, you ain't getting nothing from me. And they clutch right there. <laughs> and they rumbling, you know, and it goes down like that. So from the outside looking in, you'll say, well, why this dude going to incorporate himself into something that ain't got nothing to do with him? He going to go to jail. He going he gonna to catch a case or he going to get shipped for somebody else's debt. Yeah, they'll do that because that's what the loyalty come in effect at. Dude ain't going to ask nobody that he ain't cool with. You got the loyalty effect and then also you got the effect of uh, the dude that he told to get it. He might know that dude built like that, but that dude need it. He need it. And if he need it in the penitentiary and this is an avenue for him to get free money, he going to get it. He going to get it. If he had to go to jail, oh, so what? He ain't had nothing anyway. You see what I'm saying? So dudes will pick one of them dudes that's loyal to him or he'll pick one of them head busters that ain't got nothing and say, man, look, I got you. Just because he don't want to see the dudes who owe him feel like they ain't pay him. Because in the penitentiary, all bets will be paid one way or another. You understand me? In the penitentiary, all bets will be paid one way or another. That's a fact. You know, either by blood or by cash or by cash app or by green dot or by street to street or by commissary. Or you going to pay your debt one way or another or either somebody going to hurt you. It's, that's just how it go. And, man, I done seen dudes get slaughtered over, you know, debts, bills. I seen dudes get dudes all types of leniency. Wait a week, wait two weeks, wait three weeks, wait a month, two months, and still ain't got paid. And you see dude keep doing this and doing that. I remember one dude, he he just kept telling dude, I, I got you, man, I got you. He ain't paying. He ain't owe him number like $50. He ain't paying. And dude sit back and watch him go to store. He went to store, store after store after store. I'm talking about this dude waited probably about four or five months. And it got to the point is a double-edged sword. Because the dude that owe him now, he had the money five, ten times over. But now he feel like being that he ain't get a whole lot of pressure. That dude won't about to do nothing to him. Dude won't about that life. And he got comfortable. 
And then he going to the store. He sitting at the poker table. He doing this. He doing that. And then all of a sudden, just one day, dude just walked straight on out there, came right on up out there, came right behind him and bust his head wide open all the way to the white meat. To the white meat. I'm talking about he clucked him in the head with a battery and it almost split his skull open, man. You know, because the way he caught him, he caught him right in the front of the head. Bang! And he had a slit down his head and cracked his whole skull open. You can see the inside of his head, man. And he did that with a battery. I'm talking, when I say a battery, I'm, well, not a battery, an adapter. <laughs> anybody been, it ain't funny, I know it's not funny, but anybody been in the penitentiary know what I'm talking about. Man, we used to have adapters to different things, like to, we had adapters to TVs, we had adapters to uh, uh, CD players, we had adapters to uh, Walkmans, we had adapters to radios, uh, to everything. TVs, and he hit him in the head with an adapter that was wrapped up and split his whole head open over a debt that was months old just because he let that fester up inside of him about this dude owed me and he keep lying to me week in and week out and he going to the store and he gambling and he kicking and ha ha around here and he owed me money. And dude ain't feel that pressure because he ain't put pressure on him. Because his pressure was, you owe me and you know you owe me and you should have been paid me. But he can't feel it. See, that independent teacher, you got to make him feel it. Because dudes don't understand talk. I say that all the time. Man don't understand talk. Talk don't, it don't compute with most men. Some men that go over their head, go, you know, they don't even understand it. Every man understands violence. You understand me? Every man on this planet, I don't care what, where they come from, what country, what they understand violence. And in prison, that's what's going to be the universal language is violence. Because that's the way you get your point across. You understand? And when you owe somebody, you have to pay them. Or do not get in debt, period. Because if you think a dude going to forget a debt in prison, that is very, very unlikely, man. It's very unlikely. Even if he don't do nothing, he ain't forgot it. He ain't forgot it. You understand? I know a dude that did the same thing. Oh, he, he was too old to put work in now. But he had put work in many times in his bit. But he's too old now. And dude owe him and ain't want to pay him because he probably, you know, figured the same way. He can't do nothing to me. And he, and he probably physically couldn't, you know, unless he snuck you. And he probably ain't even want to take that chance. But I tell you what he did do. I tell you what he did do. He took the same amount of money that, that you owed him, and he gave that to another dude, and he paid him to, to, to give you that work, and he gave him that work. He paid a dude to just go whoop him. He said, I just want you to whoop him. Whoop, whoop him as bad as you can whoop him. And dude just walked right up to him and took off on him. Bang, bang, boom, boom, and just started whooping him right there in the block. Right in the block. And he's sitting there, and he's cheering him on. You know, and he and he got out on him. He got out on him decent, stomped him and everything. And he didn't even go to jail. He didn't even go to jail because the police ain't even see it. You know what I'm saying? And he got that money. And old head made him know that this was because of that money. You understand? He made him know this was because of that money. He sitting up on the top tier like this. Yeah, yeah, you know? So... It's just so many different ways that, that dudes is going to collect that money and the penitentiary. But what you need to know is they going to collect that money. If it's owed to them, they going to collect that money. Because it's the only thing that's going to keep their reputation afloat. Because if you let people take money from you in prison, guess what? They're going to be taking money for you for the rest of your bid. And it ain't, it ain't no way you could hide in prison. Your reputation will follow you from prison to prison to prison to prison. No matter what it is, good, bad, or indifferent, it's going to follow you. So you ain't going to be able to go nowhere and just feel like, oh, I, I'm good here. Don't nobody know this. Don't nobody know. They know. Because it ain't, you know, everybody know everybody. If I'm on this institution, I know probably 10, 15 people on every other institution in the state of Virginia. Because that's how people move around. That's how they get transferred. So you're going to be known. You're going to run into people. 
People be writing people. People get cool. They write home and get the letter sent to their home, boy. Man, what they got going on Buckingham? Man, on Buckingham, man, you need to get up here, man. They they got this going on. They got that going on. And they shoot the letter back. And they that's how people network. You know, I guess you could call that pr prison network. And that's how they network. You know, they write letters. And, you know, then when the emails come, it was even 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 different, even uh, easier. Because you can just email your people and say, look, get on his key, key I should e e email him this. And they can just do it like that. But information is always going to be circulated in prison. So if you're a sucker on this camp, don't think you're going to go on another camp and be a gangster because you're not. Because somebody going to know. Somebody going to know. Just as sure as grist is gross, or somebody going to know. And you can't get away with deaths like that now. Because you go to another institution and you owe two, three hundred dollars on here and you done checked in and you went to another institution. As soon as you get the way you're going, somebody going to email their people and email somebody on that compound and give them your description and give them your name and give them your number so you can't say that ain't you. And they're going to pull up on you and they're going to give you that work and they're going to want that money. If you owe 200 now they want four because they want the 200 for him and they want 200 from you. So it ain't no getting away, man. Debts will be paid in the penitentiary by blood, by pain, by money, by commissary, by any means necessary. Debts will be paid in the penitentiary. All debts will be collected in the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's something you need to know. So if you're going to prison and you got a habit or you got a gambling habit or you got a drug habit or you got whatever habit you got you better get control of it because if you can't pay for it you better not indulge in it because it will get paid in the penitentiary you know so anyway man i just wanted to run that by y'all right fast uh put that out there in the air before i get on this road but uh y'all talk to me in the comments man let me know talk to me i talk back and um don't go buy enough from nobody that you can't pay man you know, don't go buy nothing from nobody that you can't pay, man, because them people want that money. <laughs> Boom! Y'all be safe, be smart, man. Make good decisions, man. And uh, you seen them hooks, duck them. We out here. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.